We live. We very live. How's it going, fellas? How's it going, everybody? I hope you guys are doing well. You know, gotta remember that tomorrow the market's not gonna be open, so today is kind of like Friday. Gotta take it slow. Hopefully, um, you were able to lock in some sort of greens, or if you were red, hopefully you were able to lock in a small red day. Um, you know, but always gotta remember what matters in the end of in the end of a trading day is not your P and L, but um your your um, mental account, which is whether if you follow your rules, if you strategy if you traded your strategies, and if you improved in some sort of way. I am currently studying very hard. <laughs> I'm doing a little bit of research here, um, you know, about Trader Live TV. They're great traders. They have a bunch of strategies that I'm trying to implement as I am trying to learn how to hold for longer. And, um, you know, this is some great stuff. Some great stuff. Great to see. Definitely recommend this channel. Because you know, um, it's um, pleasing to the eye, to say the least. Am I right? Okay, enough of that. <laughs> um, let's get into the actual recap. Let me let me stop fooling around. You know, I'm just a little bit excited because just today I discovered the you know I discovered this channel, this beautiful channel, and um, you know I'm excited to learn and ready to go. But um, anyway, <laughs> V E R U. The stunk that never gives up. The stunk that doesn't want to quit. That doesn't quit. I remember saying on the on the chat room one day that this is kind of like my learning curve. Always failing, always giving false false, break, false breakouts, but you know never quitting on that grind to go high and high and high and high. And one day, who knows? Maybe one day this stock is gonna turn the corner and turn that hundred dollar mark and go from a stunk to a to a possible GME. I really doubt it. This probably is going to be dead by Monday. But, um, you know, it was in play again today. I overtraded it. I was up almost $300 in this stock as I took a huge dip trade. I took a huge dip trade here with, you know, decent size for the, for the share price. And then I literally sold three or two seconds before this huge flush. And that literally was like a $400 trade. It was a dip trade, which I'm, I'm going to show you today in the um, trade of the day. We're going to dissect that trade. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the strategy behind that setup. And then, of course, I'm going to show you a live um, live recording here in the Mighty Recap. You know, that was that. I took this stab here. Then I, I tried to take some scalps here. But because I'm, I, I've been a little hesitant on my scalps, you know, I didn't feel that confident. I hesitated a little bit. And then, you know, even though this is a larger float, then it usually moves a little bit slower for scalps. Because he hesitated for like literally seconds, I just took it out. And, and it ended up being, I, I literally bought around here. And I managed to lose like five cents on a micro scalp. And they literally ripped like a dollar a share. And I was in with 2,000 shares. Like imagine that two thousand dollar winner. Then I took another scalp here for the break of five day, um, and then he halted immediately. So it was like another ten cent winner. But then he halted. I didn't know what was happening because E trace level two doesn't hold, doesn't show you the halt levels, which is one and and which is one of the reasons I want to get a better level two, because if I knew that the halt levels was gonna be there, I would have held for that dang halt. Um, but because I didn't know that the halt was there, I just saw hesitation and in my mind we were double topping and this is so, so extended already that I was like, yep, time to get out of here. You know, I took my 10 cents and you know, I was up nicely on that stock, maybe like $400 at one point. But then I started over trading it here, trying to anticipate the break of this level. Anticipated like here and here didn't went, anticipated here didn't went, anticipated here, false break. You know, because I really think this thing, while it was holding this daily pivot of 1565, I really thought that it was going to curl and give another huge leg like it did here. So I was trying to anticipate the, you know, that like kind of like sweet switch from consolidation to breakout zone. You know, and then I was up 800 at one point, and 800 like 50, went down to 790. Then I was like, okay, let me get back to seven. Let me, let me back. Let me get back up to 800, and I'm gonna stop. I couldn't get myself up, I couldn't get myself up. 
it came down to 690 and then I was like okay now I'm really getting pissed you know you know because I'm 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 certainly not trading setups anymore I'm just trying to get over a psychological PNL which you know shouldn't matter so I'm closing it here even though I just gave like 20 30 percent of my gains because here here grateful for the green uh, grateful that I didn't get caught on this huge you know Titanic flush and you know it's it's Thursday tomorrow um, tomorrow it's it's day off and you know you 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 can't have it all so I'm, I'm def definitely grateful for that and I'm just I'm just not gonna let this you know losing losing trade at the end of the session bother me ATR my favorite grinding stock oh my god RT said that th that he had this on his no trade list and at the beginning I was like bro it's moving like how, how come you not trade a stock that is moving just because you have it on this thing on this list but then I realized he may have he may have he may have this stock here for a reason like this stock is just grinding I went up to like two hundred dollars and then I gave it back and the common theme on grinding stocks is that I'm able to perform well in the first 30 minutes. And that's because even though, yes, it is a grinder, but because we have such re high relative volume at the beginning of the trading, you know, open, the grindness doesn't really bother my scalping because, you know, the high volume compensates, compensates for that grinding action. So I'm still able to perform well. I got myself nice in the green with a couple of key trades. Um, break of this level here. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, no. Here, when it broke out here, is when it is when I realized that it was actually moving. So I was like, okay, game time. So the setup was the break of this pivot, which was high of day and the double top, and then you know, classic first candle to make a new high, pullback after a fresh breakout, and then you know nicely on the green and then I guess who continued to overtrade it all throughout this level me and I gave it almost everything back and before going to red I was like yep get out of my face and then you know I stopped trading it um that was ATR CRTX CRTX CRXT CRXT um this one actually was kind of nice gave me some nice profits and another stock in which I bought a dip, which I can show you in my recording. I think I bought it here. I think it was holding VWAP. It was a first pullback after a nice little, of, a nice big push. First pullback. And then I also bought here, which was a small winner. But um, it was the break of this pivot. Small winner took my profit, then it curled back again, and then it just stepped around and I, I left it alone. So an, a nice big trade here, which is literally like ninety percent of where the prof of where, of where that profit came from. I took it with four thousand shares, I think, because you know I'm upping my share size. I'm trying to keep up with RT, man. Um, he's pumping up the share size. I'm I'm right behind him, trying to do the same thing. So I pumped my share size as well. You know, it's a cheap stock. Usually before I would have traded these type of stocks with. 2,500 shares or 3,000, but because it's a cheap stock and I'm trying to bump my shares, I was like, okay, let's go, let's go 4K. And then, you know, I, I at the beginning I got some nice fills. On this one though, my order filled like in like in three different block. It was like, I bought by market and it was and then it was like filled, 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 and my my fills were all over the place, so my average was kind of crazy. But you know this this just goes to show that I'm I, I think I'm already pushing the limits for think or swim when it comes to share size. Maybe on the first couple of minutes it really didn't matter because it was it had, it had higher volume and and but you know here I, I, I saw how it struggled to get me filled. And you know four thousand shares is a big position. And I wouldn't take four thousand shares in something like Veru or in you know, in anything over like five dollars. Just on like one to two dollar stocks. Um so you know, I feel like I think like the sweet spot for Think or Swim is like twenty five hundred to three thousand shares, you know, and um, and I'm already at that almost. So you know, either the next step is to get a new broker, and see how can I how can I trade with commissions, 
or would be to you know shape my strategy a little bit to try to hold for longer or not change anything and just continue to you know lock in a year of profitability with with this current broker and with this current strategy and with this current size and that's fine i am happy to do that as well um you know a couple of setups there crtx dlpn dlpn man this was choppy my red yeah this was choppy um i went for first kind of to make a new high i think it was a winner i think it was a winner you know the first pullback in the first couple of minutes as, as i say is a key trade you know first kind of making a new high after a little bit of a trace win in the first couple of minutes i thought this stock was choosing a direction i thought that direction was going to be up i was able to take my profit and that was that and then here I lost here this is a loser I went in anticipating the break of this pivot we broke nicely but I missed the first entry which is here anticipating the break the break of that so I tried to trade the first micro pullback it started retracing I thought what I was seeing on the level 2 was some holding action I went long it didn't held you know loser I gave everything back that I made here that I made here and then some Lex, another stonk. It was looking promising at the beginning. Get, you get a nice huge move. Uh, you gave a hold reception. I tried to trade out of the hold and then was able to get away with a small loser. But, um, you know, it just didn't went as quick as I wanted it to. You know, hold reception trade there, here. Um, rad, man, what a stonk. I think the problem with this thing is that it had such a high float. Well, not, not even that high, but for some reason it was just grinding, man. And it wasn't able to like open up and, and move fluently. You know, I took some stabs. First gonna make you high. Flat trade. Um, and then Veru, which I already talked about at the beginning. And which is the big trade I'm going to show you guys today. You know. Uh, you know that was that which honestly I see it curling after you know in, in, in power hour but honestly I don't know how many traders are going to be here waiting for this thing to curl knowing that tomorrow is a holiday so you know um, yeah that's going to do it for the little recap and now let's get into some live action videos this written forth Uh, open with okay now I'll show you two big dips let me see if I can find them first okay here's one Here's one is um, on this stock, CRTX. It was pushing nicely. I was like, okay, game time. You know, reloaded that 4,000 shares. I'm like, yep, here we go. I, I was sitting flat on the day, but I was feeling, you know, I was, I was gauging at the level two. I was seeing that this stock has a very tight spread, one cent spread. It's also not moving that crazy, so I can manage my risk. And on top of that, I'm trying to increase my share size little by little. So I was like, okay. And also, it's in the first five minutes, which is usually where I perform the best. So, you know, a lot of the things aligned for me to have confidence to bump up that share size. And, you know, I knew that I had a tight top anyway. Worst case scenario, I would have lost two, three cents. And that would have been like 80, $100 loser. So, you know, that's something I can deal with. But anyway... I'm staying at the level two here right now, because you know even before you jump into jump into a trade, you gotta stay at the level two, and engage what's happening, and I see that we're bottoming out that VWAP. We're bottoming out. Um, we're holding 35s, 34s, 
and as we continue to hold for longer and longer all i need after holding for a little longer is some sort of green confirmation and you know there it is there's a the green and i'm in this this is a different type of trade because i'm trying to hold this for a little longer um, knowing that we are usually not expecting instant resolution in in dip buys you know um, so there's that I attempted that first but then I was like oh this is exactly what happened this is exactly what I was thinking but anyway let, let me finish that let me finish that thought first so on dip buys you shouldn't expect instant resolutions like you do when you're trading breakout trades when you're training when you're trading against pivots aka resistance you are in for the breakout and if it doesn't break because you're buying so high and you're buying at resistance you gotta bail immediately on the other hand though when you're buying against support when you're buying a dip you know you can leave it you can give it a little more room to breathe and to actually like chop around a little bit and see if um if you can if you can get like a bigger move because on dip buys you there's not you're not expected to have instant resolution because you know short sellers have no reason to cover and long bias scalper aggressive high day traders have not not a reason to buy so you know the only people that are buying are like people holding for a little longer so you know you just have to keep in mind that the, that the way you trade in 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 dips versus scalping breakouts is different and the way you hold the stock is different too so you know this is what was happening i was long in at 34 and then i was trying to see if i could hold for the first one minute kind of making a new high we were looking good here but then i didn't i didn't like all that sell volume so then i sold but then as soon as i sold i was like oh look at that bid and you know and this is still making a nice bull flag here like i shouldn't have sold i should have held and i was like okay right back in okay so in my mind i'm like okay let's act as if i never sold Yes, I'm a, I'm a penny higher, but I already booked 70, 70 cents of profit, $70 of profit, so that's fine. Let's act as if this is the same trade and I'm still holding from the, from the 34 entry. Now, I have my hand ready to the buy button. I know that my average price is 35, so I'm, I'm probably going to cut it if we ever see 35. If we ever see 35 on the bid, I'm going to take my flat trade because, you know, one of my rules is never allow a green trade to go come back down and turn into a red trade the candle just made a new high and i'm glad and i'm happy to take my profit big trade right nice trade to begin the day you know and, and nice trade even to walk away it's at this point it's 6 32 for me you know after two minutes of work i could be done I go and, and have the entire day for myself this is the power of trading too this is the dream of trading for me, 632, and I already have a full salary. You know, I have a day a day worth of a full salary. Uh, I could be like, okay, back to bed or or back to, you know, doing whatever, to the gym or something. But, you know, as an aggressive scalper, I want to see if I can build up my day. As an aggressive trader, I want to see if I can build up my day um, and make it a bigger bigger day and leverage this three hundred dollars instead of just taking it off the table seeing like okay now i have thirty dollars of wiggle room to play with can i make this a little bigger a bigger green day but um was that and then for the second dip um which is Let's, let's, let's look at this for a moment of silence. Look at this. Me botching up that trade. So, you know, it's ripping right here. I'm pulling it up because it ripped too quickly. But then I'm watching at it. Wait, is this even it? Yeah, this is it. Oh yeah, this is not the this is not the crazy rip that it went to straight to a halt. This is another one. 
Okay, so, you know, I put my order out. Why? Just above this, um, this little pivot here, because it's support. And now I know that I have my order out at 15.75. I think I might, have, I might have put it up like at 6.79, 80, just so that I can have some, some sense of slippage in the case we come down to retest it, but only the bids go down to 75, I don't get filled. And then, you know, I'm just giving myself a little bit of wiggle room so that when the asks drop down, they probably, if the bid goes down to 75, the ask are at least going to go to 80. So I'm giving myself a chance to get filled. And you know, what happened here is that I just had a huge dip trade on earlier on that stock that I just showed you. Um, on, so then I was, I was, I was getting kind of cute here. I was like, okay, I'm going to get a dip trade and I'm going to hold it for longer because imagine if I, if I could have hold 1700 shares all the way to half day here. So I was getting a little cocky, you know, I had a mentality of holding for longer and you know, some of the reasons I gave profits back today because of that big win I got earlier, I was like, okay, dip trades it is. And I started taking dips everywhere. Uh, but you know, some of them were like flat trades. Most of them were red trades, and these two that I'm showing you are the big, nice trades. So, let's watch this. Now I put my order out, waiting, waiting for the pullback, waiting to see if I can, if I get filled. If I don't get filled, you know, I usually don't take it because I'm, I'm so new at taking dips that if it's not, if it's not perfect, I don't want it. And well, why is something perfect? You know, if if it literally comes back and retest. Um, and retest this pivot to the penny. You know, textbook trading, come back up, t retest to the penny. I'll take it if it does, and if it doesn't, well, I'll look to scalp it higher. So watching here, let's say I have my bid out at 80 or 79, 77, 78. So I, I know that order is out on the back of my mind. mind. So now I'm just, just staring at the bid to see if I can get filled. 78, am I gonna get filled? Yes, sir, I'm in. I'm in with a miraculous fill. This thing probably dipped down to 77, but because the e trade level 2 is kind of like lagging, that's why it didn't show it. Oh yeah, see here, 15.77 is the bottom of this candle, so it, it did went down to my order, so like, so it got me there. And I'm like, you know, usually before I would have taken the profit immediately right here, but because I was feeling cocky, and, you know, I was feeling cute with it, like I'm feeling with the, um, <laughs> the Trader TV live, you know, live trading um, channel. Uh, I was trying to hold this for a little longer. So, you know, I'm holding. I'm seeing if we can let this candle close. Wait for another candle to open. That kind of makes it how you rips. And then it would have been a huge win. But even now, it's a, it's a nice win. I'm in 1517. You know, again, 1517 is my backstop. Now let's see if we can if we can get the break through 16 psychological level. Can we get the break? Ooh, there's some resistance there. Okay, I'm still not out because my average cost is so nice. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna give it another chance. But if we hesitate again to try to break 16 after seeing all that green, that's gonna be it. You know. Wait. So I'm watching here. I'm long. Let's see. The f this is the first attempt of the break of 16. We attempt, uh, there's no no break. There's probably some hidden sellers there. Okay, I'm not panicking out yet. Another break of 16, that's a lot of green. We broke by two cents. And you know, at this point, even though it's still looking good, and probably, you know, more often than not, this kind of would have closed here and then would have gave at least a false breakout to the upside and then it would have sold there. But here, I was like, man, this is too big, of, too nice of a win. Let me take it off the table. Look at this. And then as soon as I saw the kind of regret it because I saw that big bid at 12, at 16, but it immediately got eaten. I'm like, okay, I'm out of this. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And it's not over yet. It's not over yet. Look, look. Isn't that crazy? Isn't, isn't this crazy? I sold literally one second one second before this and let's say i wouldn't have, i wouldn't have been that lucky to sell the, the, the spot i sold where would i have sold so i'm in this average price 15.777 watching 
They say I'm still in. I'm still in. Uh oh, a lot of red. I would have sell there 1577. I would have, I would have hit the sell market at 1577, and I would have probably gotten fill at 1560s, 1550s even because of slippage. But you know, it would have been a, you know, maybe like a 300 dollar loser. But it wouldn't. I wouldn't have let it go all the all the way down like it went. So you know, so this is how it would have worked. Watching for my average cost if it, my average cost gets hit i'm out of here watching let's say i'm still long 1577 watching uh, market order market market the hell ordered out of here you know i'm probably getting filled at 65 you know and from 65 to 77 you know like 12 cent loser 1700 shares 107 170 to 200 dollar loser you know big loser but you know, definitely way manage, way more manageable that that freaking Titanic candle we got there. Let's look at that one more time. Because that's just crazy, man. I sell there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 15 seconds after I sold, 15 seconds after I sold, this thing was a dollar a share under my entry. A dollar a share, a dollar a share. A dollar a share times 1,700, 1700 shares would have been a seven, a thousand seven $1,700 loser. And you know, that's, that's too much, man. I, that would have been the biggest loser of my career. And nope. No, no, no. Um, no, that's not gonna ever happen. You know, knock on wood, anytime soon. But anyway, I was gonna do it for the recap, and um, it looks like I'm finally gonna close this video before before 30 minutes. So let me close it quickly. Um, it's been a good week. Hopefully, you guys had a good week as well. Remember, PNL is not what dictates your progress. What dictates your progress is you getting doubt, you the you doing active practice. You're going back to your metrics, going back to your recordings, dialing in those setups, dialing in those entries, journaling what the hell went wrong, what the hell went right, and then continue to continue to show up every goddamn day. If you do that for long enough, I truly believe in this quote, that consistency is the mother of all mastery. So just keep showing up, keep showing up every day, because that's really what I did. That's really what I did to turn the corner. Just show up, even when I didn't saw light at the end of the tunnel, I would just continue to wake up, Freaking 5, 4.50 a.m. because the market opened so early here. You know, I just continue to wake up. Sometimes I didn't even want wanted to. I didn't even feel like losing money again, but I still showed up. And I was still, you know, gave it my best. And I was still, after having a red day, I still went back to the books and learned something. Back to the courses and saw something. Back to the journaling and wrote something. For two years of pure failure, man. So... If you read, read week, read month, read anything, don't get discouraged. Let's get down. Let's keep fighting with all our might. Because one day, one day, ladies and gentlemen, you just might. All right. Take it easy, fellas, and I'll see you on Monday. Have a good long weekend.